What is going on guys, DBG here, and today is going to be the six month, I think, update. It's been a little bit longer than six months on the truth about NBA 2K24, my team. I'm probably going to make another one of these in about three weeks um, because, well, I think it's going to be important to see how season six starts in general, but I also think that it's important to talk about the entire state of my team right now and not just make a short round video about a specific thing. And talk about this game mode in its totality the way it is right now on the 24th of March 2024. Because if you guys don't know, like things do change. Things do change. Like I think I made this video in last time I made this video was like before the All-Star Packs came out. And I was in an okay spot with this game mode. You can see how little content we've gotten recently. But like the last time I made this video, we were getting, we got a probably a really good um, free diamond here. I'm not sure if I'd made a post this right here because this was kind of the beginning of the end. Like I genuinely thought and I was like this card being VC only was a bad sign. I was like there's been only two cards VC only in the history of my team um, and that was Michael Beasley and Jeremy Lin and I'm like this is this is real bad. This is real bad and then obviously it got a hundred times worse. But like we had come off a really good month. We'd come off a really good January, like as bad as the Pyramid of Power was, the same day we got a free Joel Embiid. The Dynamic Duo was that I actually thought was one of the best sets we've had in a long time. Were the cards a little bit pricey at 20k for the cheapest? Yes. But like cards are 75k the cheapest now, so. But at the same time, you could get a really good Diamond Kobe and Shaq Duo and a really good Diamond LeBron and Wade Duo. Cards that, like, something we haven't seen since is affordable versions of hyped players. We haven't seen that since then. And obviously, Inferno all being free, level up being free. Like, I do I do actually really like the Rush sets. That is the one, like, kind of positive thing is I do like the Rush sets being available every single um, every single Tuesday. And I like the fact they're three weeks. If these were only, or two weeks, if these were only available for a week, it would have been an absolute disaster. It would have been an absolute disaster if these were only available a week like they initially wanted. And, like, that just shows that 2K again can... They have the ability to change things, which is what makes some things so frustrating. Like, for example, the Nebula set. The Nebula set having beastly pink diamonds. Like, they're never going to change how predatory they are. Like, 2K suck as a company. They legitimately suck. Like, I... They suck. There's no other way of saying that. Like, and like, this is some... I'm someone who, without question, like would have been probably like as much as I would complain about the game would have been quite pro not even that anti the company back in the day um like heck if you would, if you had asked me even two years ago even in 2k22 if you had have asked me like um would I if YouTube wasn't going unbelievably well would I when this goes down take a job with 2k I would have said 100% yes but it's just gone. It's gotten to the stage where it's like, I don't think, well, first of all, they wouldn't want me, but like, I'm not sure I would do it. I don't think there's an amount of money that will make me do this, to be honest. Um, But like, you can see it right here. The Rush set, it was so frustrating with the Rush set because this was a ridiculous grind and they extended it by a week. So you're like, yeah, that's good. But it's like, surely they should have known it was too long in the first place. And then they have the ability to change this. So then why did it take them six weeks before they gave us a competent pink diamond? Like from um, from Wild West, Leap Year, Iconic, and Maestro, there is one good card. 1.5 good cards. Danny Green's okay. Danny Green's all right. But Franz Wagner is the only legitimately good card from Iconic. Is the only good card in all four of those. I'm not joking with you when I say this. Julian Strauder. Julian Strauder. Ruby is better than Cliff Hagen. Um, I'm trying to think of cards that are under 10,000 MT better than Antoine Walker. Uh, I'm not sure. Lamont Murray. Not Lamont Murray, Jesus. Um, Leonard Miller. Lamont Murray is a decent free card, though. Leonard Miller is under, is like 9K, better than Antoine Walker. Um, Emerald Dyson Daniels is 875 MT and is better than Chauncey Billups. Um, while Rubio... Ruby on probably isn't as good as Jalen Suggs for 2,000 MT, but Suggs and Franz duo for 4,000 MT is definitely better than both of these guys. 
And as far as centers are concerned, Mo Bamba, I think, is better than both of these. I'll be, and like, I love Anderson Varejo, who's at least comparable, because Varejo can, like, point center cheese. These guys weren't off. Like, this is the worst set we've ever had. And like, the Nebula set is at least interesting, because, like, I don't have access to the game right now, which is why I'm on the database. I'm away on holiday, and I actually, I showed up, I brought an Xbox Series S, but the Xbox Series S is the console that's normally used by my roommates. And I didn't realize they didn't have 2K24 downloaded because the file size. And I just don't have, I only have like 100 gigs to work with for my entire stay here. And I'm not, I like the game's 160 gigs. So I don't have enough data even to download the game. But I would have, I would have done gameplays with every single one of these cards. Would I have paid for all of them? No. Um, I probably would have, maybe I would have, maybe I would have just spent my, spent my legal tender on, on these just because of the time it would have taken the grind DMT. But at the same time, like for people that don't like getting one or two of these cards is great. And that's kind of the purpose of the game is that every week you log in and are able to get a couple of cards. And like with Rush, if it becomes a case of just having to grind, 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 it's a little bit different because I like Rush. But Rush would complement a set where you can actually... Like, what I do like about the name of Rush is that, like, if you're grinding Rush, your that are pretty decent. Um, I don't know why, just there. But you've got your two-point guards that are pretty decent when it comes to um, just the game in Darren Williams and John Starks. So you can use those two. You've got Andrew Wiggins. You don't... You kind of need some bigs. Um... Well, let's just say go with Rush Danny Granger, but like that involves 15 domination games. Screw it. Maybe you want to play 15 Dom games and go and get Rush Danny Granger. I mean, each to their own, I guess. And you can go and buy yourself a Dino Raja and a Tyrus Thomas. You probably earned quite a lot of MT through that. Or you can play the game and complete next week's Rush agendas and just play the game normally, and you probably will earn. You don't need to play a crazy amount of MT to earn like two of these cards. The only thing is, is that like, as the seasons and stuff go on, the MT you earn decreases. So, like, a lot of the MT you'll earn from, like, Unlimited is getting your Diamond Option Pack, getting your getting your two Diamond Option Pack, getting the two most expensive players and selling them for 80k MT. Getting the Pink Diamond Option Pack, getting the two most expensive players and selling them at 7,000 points. Like, that's, like, that's realistically where you're making most of your MT. You're making most of your MT in the first while you're goat working up towards, say, like, a Zach Randolph or something, or a, not even Chris Middleton, or, like, a Michael Porter Jr. So that's where you earn most of your MT. After that, it does taper off. But, like, you can still earn easily from playing the game. I should say, you can earn 20k an hour. Like, is that it? Maybe 20, yeah. I'd say if you're playing salary cap, you can probably earn about 20k an hour on average, which isn't a crazy amount, like, like, obviously, that is a lot of time. Like, spending 10 hours playing this game for these cards is crazy. But, like, if you do spend... If you do want to get one player a week and you're playing five hours of this game a week, yeah, you probably can. But still, that's not good. Like, I'm trying to justify it, but that's not good. Like, that's the shake and bake logic of a casual player who plays three hours a day of the game. Like, that's just dumb. Like, when we... As annoying as, like, I'm trying to justify this. I don't know why I'm constantly trying to justify this, but, like, a person plays two hours of the game last year let's take a look at what was the let's just say high res a person plays a couple of hours at his game um let's just say you were able to earn 10,000 mt an hour josh giddy was 20,000 mt you were getting a galaxy opal six foot eight point guard 20k della shrimp was like 15k mt galaxy opal 15k and heck you could sell them and you'd only lose like 2,000 mt because it was only 10 percent tax Giannis was expensive in fairness alex caruso let's just compare the two carusos you know how much this card was? 5,000 MT. You know how much this Caruso card is? And like, we're like kind of hi half hyping this card up as like, oh, such a great value point guard. Let's, uh, take a look at this year's Caruso. So that's what we, we also have to look at a difference there. We have to look at the difference. And this is probably the biggest thing because obviously they came out in basically the same week. So total stats, 2973. He does have the Curry slide, his release only on quick with Jordan Dribble style. This card's total stats are 3016, so very similar to total stats. You've got 12 Hall of Fames, 29 golds. You've got 37 golds, 17 Hall of Fames. 
But there are a lot more badges this year than last year. 73k versus 5k. Caruso on very quick Jordan dribble style. He doesn't have the curry slide, I guess. But like, that's really where it is. And his dunk animations are quick drops. So which of these cards are better? Uh, probably this year's. Probably this year's. But as, if you're looking at comparable point guards, probably around the same. Except the difference is this one was 5,000 MT. And if you wanted to sell them, you got four... You got four and a half thousand MT back. You bought them for five K, sold them for five K, you will get four or five hundred MT back. Which means total cost of five hundred coins. Anything you buy and you whatever you sell, the total cost of it is will be a lot of the time what you can sell it for back. What the profit you can make. Because if you can always sell it back, you can rent cards. Whereas this year, 73,000 MT. If you want to sell this card, you're selling them for about 30-ish K, maybe less, 30 K maybe you're selling them for. So you're losing 40 K by buying them if you don't like them. And it's the same card. It is effectively the same card. The I can't really see any noticeable differences. A plus nine block on this year's card. Cool. That's really it. Um, And he's actually, in fairness, he's, he's a lot more... Um complete badge wise than last year but at the same time a lot of these badges didn't really matter other than brick wall but it just shows like what was 5k last year is 75k this year and people are calling a good value this year people are calling a good value this year if you played this game for an hour like if you played one hour of this game and you booted up a new account and there were a bunch of things you could do to make an easy like 5 to 10k you could get Every single one of these cards, and I don't mean like you could like buy every single one of these cards and get, keep them all. You could get this guy on a job if you didn't. I am. Um, you could sell them back. You could use Shaden Sharp. You could use Evan Turner. You could use Caruso. You could use Jeremy Sohan. And from playing the game with just those guys, playing maybe an hour or two of the game with those guys, and buying and selling them one by one, you probably had enough MT to keep three of them. So for playing the game for about two hours. You could have three of these pink diamonds. For playing the game for two hours, you can have a third of the cheapest in Alex Caruso. That's just where it is. Like, this is. I remember seeing a tweet from Henry, and Henry tweeted out saying, This is the best for budget players. I'm like, How? These aren't budget players. Budget players are still using. Like, if you come up against like budget players, they're legitimately still using guys from season three. Like, if you just start off this game, you've got to be using guys from Season 3. you got to be using cheap cards because, like, how are you? what cards are you meant to use to build up? Like, there's no reason why people should be still using Kyle Korver from Season 1 to play offline. There's no reason why people should still be... The best value center in the game is still David Robinson. Like, Dino is a power forward, but if you want to use Dino as center, Dino's the exception. But the second best center you can buy in this game is david robinson from december and it's not like he's the second best center in the game he's not even a top 10 center in the game he's the second best you can buy and like we're slowly getting to the stage now where you can't buy the top five cards in any position like we're actually getting to that stage where you will not and very soon you're not going to be able to buy the top 10 cards in any position you're not going to be able to buy the top 15 cards in any position and like that's coming like that is genuinely genuinely coming like, I don't see them releasing past Galaxy Opals in the player market either. And this game mode is going to get better this year. It's just not going to be better long term. Because the one thing that the last six weeks has shown me is that it's not necessarily a case where the game mode's doomed because it's NBA 2K. Like, it's never going to be doomed. It's never going to be doomed as a game because it is the only basketball game. And 2K know that. They have a monopoly. They're still going to make some money. They are prob they should profit. Like, as long as they don't keep wasting tens of millions of dollars on bringing in NBA players, which nobody cares about. Like, I'm sorry. I remember back in the day when 2K did, like, a 250K show. And, like, I used to run, like, 250K watch party type things. And would like quadruple their views. I would quadruple their views. Like I would be sitting there on like 6,000 views. And they'd be like 1,500 views. 
And then I remember for the final, I can't remember what it was. Like they obviously for the finals, they needed, they needed the locker codes to bring in the players. But I just remember sitting there being like, you've brought in like already in the first like hour of the stream before the game started, they had brought in like seven NBA players. And I'm like, you have probably spent about 20 grand on this. I know 20 grand is equivalent to 20 cent to me from for two guys. Like you spent 20 grand on this and I'm sitting here in a discord call with a bunch of uh, a bunch of other people that are interested in the game. We're pulling in five times the amount of views you guys are. So I'm like, so hopefully they just stop spending stupid. It's the only way they're going to lose money on this game. It's a game that markets itself. They don't need to market, but they'll still spend, they'll still make marketing their biggest expense for a game that doesn't actually need marketing. Um, which is hilarious. Like it's it's NBA 2K. People are gonna buy it. You if you lower that marketing budget to zero, people would still buy the game. Um, and people would buy the game at a similar rate than they buy the game at right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, it is. It's very much a case now where I used to always say like things are gonna get better. Maybe this is just a mistake maybe like it's the decisions are made and they don't really know what they're doing or like they've just miscalculated something and no this is calculated like this is 2k don't care about making a good game anymore and that is what i've learned this year is that i think you can see the logic behind everything back in the day like you could see the logic behind the trophy case and you could very much see like last year coming into this season you could see they put in effort like some people didn't like season five and that's fine you can see they put in effort. I don't think they put in any effort in season six, really. Like, that's what I'll say. Like, I don't think season six had that much effort. The playoff set and Evos were cool. But, like, it was just heroic Evos and promos. That's all we got for the entire set. Not one grindable card other than Lil Yachty for the entire thing. For the entire season. And we thought that was the worst thing we got. There's no effort being put in. There's actually none. There is no effort whatsoever being put into this game. To making this a good game. Whereas you could see last year, a lot of the time they like they tried things that didn't work out. And I'm willing to like accept that. That they can try. I said it last year and I'm like, how many years of right idea, wrong execution can we keep giving 2K credit for? But right now they're not even trying. This isn't the right idea, wrong execution. This is a terrible idea executed perfectly. They have executed their terrible idea perfectly. Is the best they've executed anything because it, it's going to affect their money. The Rush set's cool. The Rush sets are cool. I will say that. But like, MT doesn't mean anything anymore. It actually doesn't. And like, you can say that it means a little bit because of this set right here. But like, that doesn't change the fact that we've gone however many weeks. Like, I genuinely did not upgrade a single player in my main squad from the 2nd of February... Like, I'd easy only on... Actually, no, sorry, I bought Beasley. From 9th of February until I get back, until the 22nd of March, I didn't change one player in my main squad. Because there's no point. I didn't have the time to grind all of this. And not one player. My team's at its best. There's content for everybody. My team is at its best. Like, if you want to look at NBA 2K20, that's a perfect example. So you see this Campus Legends set. This set came out right after Spotlight Sims. And obviously, like, the original Spotlight Sims, we had a lot of great free players. And, like, this card here immediately outclassed the James Harden. So if you didn't want to grind, you could spend a bunch of MT or a bunch of VC. You could open packs. You could sell your cards and you could buy a Magic Johnson. And I'm pretty sure... Actually, no, a Magic Johnson didn't come with the Evo. He got the Evo pretty quickly. Um, Maybe he did come with the Evo. But, like, if you want to look, say, Spotlight Sims. See these cards right here? If you wanted to grind up, you could use your cam... If you wanted to grind a couple of cards, you could use your Cam Reddish, your KPJ, and you could get your Robert Covington and stuff, and your Malcolm Brogdon and be fine. Um, if you wanted to grind the whole thing, you could get yourself your James Harden. You could get yourself your Opal James Harden, who could run the point for you for months. And that's if you want to be an old, like, a hardcore grinder. Like, you could get that. Or if you wanted to be a big baller, you could get your Mellow or you could get your Maddie Johnson. And if you were just on a budget, you could go and run your 5K Danny Manning. You didn't want to grind out your Spotlight Sims. You could go and run your Danny Manning. 
you could run your Dante DiVincenzo over 2,000 MT. No matter what type of player you was, you were, there was something for you. And I legitimately think that that was always the case. Because of the auction house being supply and demand, there were always going to be cheap players no matter what. And as much as people want to say, oh, these are budget cards, they're not. They're just not. We've been brainwashed into having nothing for so long that some people have seven, eight hundred thousand MT and are being like, oh, these are great budget cards. None of these are budget cards. These are high tier cards. They're not even mid tier cards. 20,000 MT used to be considered a mid tier card. Budget cards used to be like 10k and under. 10 to like 35k was what we would call a mid tier card. And then 35 to 100k would have been like upper mid tier. And then there were like the top tier cards were 100k plus. So like worst case, these are all upper mid tier cards. They're not even in the budget or mid tier cards. And like we all have different different definitions of budget, but they're not even like, it's not even close. And the crazy thing is they started Wild West with giving us some decent budget cards. Like you can't act like um, Terry Cummings is terrible because he's not. He's not. Terry Cummings is not terrible. Vladi Divac, like these cards would have been like, mid slightly mid-tier cards your Marcus Smart was a great mid-tier point guard Leonard Miller and Terry Cummings were very nice budget players at 10k because obviously 10k this year is like 5k last year they gotta bring it back they just gotta bring it back like and they've already they've committed to getting rid of the diamond tier in promo pack so we're never we're not gonna see it again and that's the scary thing is we're not gonna see budget cards again and it's not like they're just never gonna come back like, they're not going to lower pink diamonds to 10,000 MT. They're just not this next season. And then by the time pink diamonds are going to be around 10,000 MT, they're not going to exist anymore. And we're going to be at opals at 100k. Budget cards don't exist. And you might be saying, oh, but like, these are easy grinds. You're either, like, I get it. They are. Some of them are, and some of them are kind of grim. But like, we should be able to just log in and get a card. There should be a situation where you're able to log in and get a card and not log in and have to get a card from before Christmas. Like, if you look at every one of my building squads from scratch, I use the same players. I use Dyson Daniels. I use Bilal Koulibaly. I use, um, I get Kyle Korver for offline. I buy Julian Strader for 7,000 MT because he's still the best card in the game under 20,000 MT. Like, that's two, my card's two months old. And the worst part is, like, there's times they've had opportunities. They've had opportunities. You look at the very start of, uh, of January. Or the very start of season four, we got um the very start of season four, season rewind two, and these were the last like legitimate. Well, they weren't the last legitimate budget players. You know what? Actually, they were. Sorry, I'll say that they were the last legitimate budget players we had in my team, because I'll say it right now. Like you were getting like getting a for example twenty thousand MT amethyst were somewhat budget, but they weren't budget. They weren't because you it was hard to get them all. It would it'd take a week of grinding for most people to get them all. The last real budget set we had was Tis the Season Future. Actually, no, sorry. I do apologize. It wasn't the last budget set we had. The last budget set we had was probably New Year's Resolution. That was at least competent cards. Because with New Year's Resolution, we at least got like... These three card, these two cards here were like 5,000 MT and they were insanely good. But you, you had to grind them as well. So let's just say the last... Yeah, I'm not wrong. The last like actual proper budget set we had budget cards we had were Tis the Season Future where the Emeralds were really nice for like two and a half thousand MT where you could log in play an hour and get all the cheap cards which you used to always be able to do you used to be able to log in play an hour or two and get all the budget cards that you wanted this set you could log in play an hour or two and get Shengu and so on these three guys are you get all of these guys right here these five guys playing and I don't think it's going to exist because again the game is good when there's something for everybody the game is good when not all content is going to be for everybody, but my team is in a good place when there's something for everyone to do. When ever, when almost every drop of content, there's something for everyone. When yeah, some grinds aren't going to be for everyone, like the domination grind, which is fine. But there's back in the day, every single promo had something for everyone. Your budget cards, and even if it wasn't the card that outclassed the card previously. If you, regardless of how much MT you had, there was always a card that you would be like, even if they weren't completely outclassing your team, you would still replace them because you could at least sell the card you previously had for almost what you bought it for. And you would basically move laterally, move sideways in cards, just trying out new cards. But now with the 60% tax, you can't do that. And the fact that every card's on auction, you can't do that. This game's awful. Like this game's actually awful. Like 
there's nothing good about it. There's legitimately nothing good about it. Like, Rush isn't a bad concept. But there's a difference between saying a concept is good and the game is good. There is nothing good about this game mode right now. There is nothing that this game mode in 2K24 does better than 2K23. There's actually nothing. And I hated 2K23. I think 2K23 is the worst my team up to this point. I think gameplay is slightly better this year. So I do think if you want to say 24 is better, cool. I actually think gameplay is better this year. 23, I didn't think it'd get worse. It is impossible to get worse than it is right now. It's actually not possible. I think it's going to stay the same. I don't think it's going to get better, but it's impossible to get worse. I think we're going to have probably a good June, July, and probably a terrible... Probably going to have a good June. We're probably going to have a terrible July, terrible... Or a July where it's all just like endgame this, endgame that, or the equivalent. And we're not really going to care. We're going to have a, a, a quiet August. Um, we're going to probably have a terrible April, a terrible, probably a terrible May as well. And that's, I think, what we're going to be looking at. I think we're going to be looking at this month, March being, February and March being the two worst months ever. I think we're going to be looking at slightly better, but still terrible April. I think we're going to be looking at quite a bad May and probably a decent June like last year. But yeah, it's, it's it just is what it is at this stage, Um, if we're being honest. It just is what it is. Um, The game mode sucks. And I don't think 2K, the people making this game, give a damn about making a good game anymore. I actually think they actively don't want to make a good game. I think there's a lot of decisions you can see that they can make and they haven't. Like this type of stuff right here. I think there's decisions they can make to make this a good game, but have actively chose not to make good decisions. Um, And you can see even they're actively trying to make you play longer just for the sake of it, rather than actually incentivizing you to play longer. They're they're not incentivizing people to play the game. They're punishing people for not always playing the game. And there's two very different things, and that's what the dev team have been doing. For example, like um, adding excluding challenges into certain agendas for no reason. And then when they take that off, add you need to do a certain thing with rush players. But like to get five rush players is going to take you like two hours of your time. So it's like, it's not that like they're encouraging people to play more. They're, it feels like they're punishing people that don't know life this game. And that's just going to drive players away. And I think every single time we we talk about this game, I think they've driven more players away than, than this time last year. Like sure, the game's going to become free. The game's on Game Pass. It's probably going to be free in PSN. It's never going to die. It's basketball. But I do think that 2K are actively trying to drive people away that aren't going to either spend all their time or all their money on this game. And I think it is going to be awful long term. And I cannot see this game mode being in a better place this time next year, which is scary. I can see this game being in a better place this time next month. I can see this game being in an even better place in May and an even better place in June when I make these videos. But what I can't see is the game being at a better place in a year time, in two years time, in three years time. I can only see it getting worse and worse and worse for specific times in specific years, which is very scary. So anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.